Mr. Chancellor, Chair of the Board of Governors, Madam President, colleagues, graduates, and honored guests. I'm very honored to present Diane Morrison for an honorary degree. She is an individual of great accomplishment, having made a significant change in her own life and thereby making a significant change in the lives of many others. Diane Morrison began her career as a teacher, doubtless a good one, but her true calling resulted from her becoming a volunteer at the Ottawa Mission, an organization that provides food and shelter to homeless men and women. That experience brought to life her own upbringing as one of four farm children raised by a widowed mother. In her own words, we couldn't have made it without the community helping us. That reflection, plus a genuine affinity for the work of the Ottawa Mission, propelled her in short order from volunteer to executive director of the mission, a position she held from 1991 to 2013. During this time, Diane Morrison became the public voice of the mission, but she also gave its clients a voice and a better life, founded on the cornerstones of dignity and respect. Over two decades, the capacity of the mission grew from 76 to 235 beds. She founded a learning center, a six-month residential rehabilitation center, and an on-site dental clinic. She established a palliative care unit connected to the shelter, the first of its kind in North America. This unit was named the Diane Morrison Hospice in 2013. She secured burial with dignity for the homeless in Canada's National Cemetery, Beechwood. Her work extended beyond the mission to build and sustain the Ottawa Food Bank and co-found the Coalition to End Homelessness. Diane Morrison has received numerous awards, including the YWCA Women of Distinction Award, the Order of Canada, the Order of Ontario, and the Order of Ottawa. We should welcome the occasion to honour her and welcome her to the Carleton University community today. Mr. Chancellor, in recognition of a lifetime of service dedicated to improving the lives of homeless and marginalized people in the Ottawa Carleton community, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa upon Diane Morrison. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors and upon recommendation of the University Senate, I confer this degree upon you, Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Congratulations. Congratulations, first of all, to all of the students here. I know you've worked so hard to get to this place, so well done. Mr. Chancellor, Chair of the Board, Madam President, graduands, and honored guests, and this is particularly for the graduands, I would like to congratulate you. Your degree is not only the result of hard work and perseverance, but it is the outcome of a life plan you have made for yourself. A life plan that was made earlier in your life when you had to grapple with the choices of who you wanted to be and what you wanted to do with your life. For some of you, your life plan will now take you to further education. For others, you will enter the working world. Whatever life plan you have chosen to follow, this will be a key moment, a moment when your plans will begin to shape your future. It's at this precise moment that I would like to share with you a quote from Susan Gilmore, a quote that certainly proved true in my own life. It's a funny thing how much time we spend planning our lives. We so convince ourselves of what we want to do that sometimes we don't see what we're meant to do. Like you, I had my life planned. My life plan in a nutshell went like this. I planned to be a school teacher. 
Like you, I followed my life plan and got my degree. I became a teacher, got married, had two children. Everything went according to plan, and it was everything I wanted from life. I soon found out that there were other paths and that I was, that I was meant to follow. You see, I wanted to be a school teacher, but I was meant to run a homeless shelter. There was a moment when I wanted to, what I wanted to do in life came face to face with what I was meant to do in life. One prediction I can make for you, there may come a time when what you have planned for your life will collide with what you're meant to do in your life. And it's an awkward moment. All the planning and everything you want from life will point in one direction, while what you're meant to do in life can point you in a totally different direction. That was my experience. For me, that moment came when I found myself with some extra time and I volunteered at a homeless shelter to see what it was like. I found that the shelter called to me in a way that touched my soul. I found people who were lonely and filled with hopelessness that speaks of a lost future, a despair that comes when the realities of life have dispensed harshly with the dreams and hopes they once had. There was a lack of basic dignity as people couldn't get clean clothes and enough to eat because there just wasn't enough money. I started, and you'll find this funny, by washing walls and buying underwear. Before I knew what was happening, the executive director asked if I would be his assistant. I had to make a choice. I, I, I had to make a choice. I had to stick with my plan or go where I knew I was meant to be. It may seem like a straightforward choice, but it wasn't. I would have to leave a well-paying career and accept half the pay, and I had no security for the future. There were my children and their futures to consider. It was a huge gamble, a huge risk, and a huge change for my future. Such choices are never easy, even when you feel certain that this is what you're meant to do. In the end, I made the change. I was afraid because I was leaving my plans and everything I knew. Within 12 months, I became the executive director. I was going down a completely unknown and unplanned path. That's always a scary moment. I had no idea that I was about to spend the next 22 years of my life in that job. It was the hardest job I have ever done. It was the most meaningful job I ever had. It was what I was meant to do, but it was not what I had planned to do with my life. Strangely, I found myself in the same boat as all the people I had come to help, because none of them had planned to live at the Ottawa Mission either. Some of them had gone to university, had obtained degrees, and had made life plans for themselves. But that didn't include the Ottawa Mission. But there, for the grace of God, go I, so to speak. Now, one of the fellows that I met was a man by the name of Daniel. Daniel was university educated and a brilliant pianist. He came from a wealthy family who supported him in his life plan to pursue a career in music. But Daniel had an addiction, an addiction that he couldn't shake. And despite all his family support, his addiction led him step by fateful step to the doors of the Ottawa Mission. There were many others who were traveling down the road of addiction. We decided we needed an addiction treatment center for the many people who were struggling with substance abuse. Our addiction program became a rea reality thanks to the fundraising efforts of my husband and the community. The addiction center now is called Lifehouse and it provides housing for 15 people and supportive housing off-site for people who have graduated from the program. Daniel, along with many others, was able to, make, to graduate from the six-month program and make new plans and dreams for his future. And then one day, a young man by the name of Henri knocked at my door. He was trying to get a job, but he didn't have any skills. Today, the mission can support our students in Algonquin College and other places. There is on-site food service training program managed by the chef and the trained staff. And to date, 70 graduates from this program are working in our community. Many students furthered their education at, different, at colleges and universities. Then one day, a young man named Peter showed up at my door. 
He had a terminal illness. He actually had AIDS. It was the beginning of the AIDS crisis. And he refused to go to the hospital. He wanted to die surrounded by his street friends. He was scared to be alone. And he died in a small room at the mission, surrounded by his friends. And his service at the mission was attended by many of his friends and family who came to say goodbye. For some time, I had been thinking of providing a place for the homeless to spend their last days. I dreamed of building a hospice, a place where homeless people who were terminally ill could find a place of dignity and respect. I worked with some of the street people to build a model that would be suitable for this population. The hospice would require medical personnel, nursing staff, support of multiple government agencies, and a new addition to our shelter. We had great community support in this, initi in this initiative. The Mission Hospice is unique in North America. There is no one other one like it. The men and women who are in palliative care know that they will be treated with dignity and respect and that their end-of-life wishes will be fulfilled. And more importantly, they will not be placed in an unmarked grave. They will be remembered on a tombstone in Beechwood Cemetery. There were many things that I did not know how to do. I only knew that I was meant to do them. And when you're meant to do something in life, you find a way of doing it. Which brings me back to you and the plans you have made for your lives. As you begin to fulfill these plans and enjoy the success you deserve, some of you may find that you are doing exactly what you are meant to do in life. Some of you may find that the road you've chosen leads somewhere totally unexpected. The road may not give you what you thought you wanted. It may instead give you an opportunity to do what you were meant to do in life. Don't discount this opportunity. Don't turn away in fear, and don't let the economics of the situation be the deciding factor. Had I done so, thousands of homeless people would not have received the hope and the help they desperately needed. Somewhere in the world, there are thousands of other people whose only hope in life might depend on your willingness to travel a road different than the one you planned for yourself. Be strong, go forward, and make the world a better place. Thank you.